Hey, welcome back to Fusion 360 for woodworkers. Today, we're going to look at bodies and components and what's the difference and when do you use them. Look at how to actually draw a component and how to use parameters in your design. If that sounds good, stick around. Hey, welcome back. As you can see, the workshop is looking a bit more like it normally does. The workbench is coming on very well and the bill for that is available over on the website. Today, we're gonna to continue our journey in how to model this bookcase in Fusion 360. Today, we're going to look at the basics of drawing. We're going to look at bodies. We're going to look at components and we're going to look at parameters and why they're so important in using those in our design. So let's head over to the computers and crack on. Okay, first thing we want to do is to set up a project. So click on the new project button and you can see it creates a project up here. Give it a name, we'll call it Book uh, Case 2020. Now that's created a folder over in the cloud and Fusion is a cloud-based software. Yes, the application sits on your desktop, all your files and all your data sit in the cloud. I know a few people have said to me, can you do all this locally? I think you can download an offline version so you can work on it if you're not connected to the internet, but fundamentally it does store things in the cloud, which is actually a benefit. It gives you version control, it gives you backups, it allows you to use it across multiple platforms, it allows you to collaborate on the design with multiple people. So the cloud doesn't get in the way and it's pretty seamless. So anyway, we've now created this bookcase project. Now in our workspace, you'll see that we've still called this untitled. So although we've created the project, this isn't yet saved to that project. So click on the save button and that brings up this dialog. And in this dialog, it's asking you for a name and also a location. Your location is the project that you've just created. So come down to the pull down menu. And just out of interest, look at this here. This is my logo project. And I think of these projects really as folders. And inside the logo folder, I have a number of files, my knowledge tree file, my label file, my logo file. These are all different designs that I've just associated to my logo project. If I now select the bookcase 2020 one we've just made, you can see I've got no files, no designs, no information inside there. Come up to the name, let's give this a name. And we're gonna call this one bookcase design. Click okay, save that down. Now this will now take us to Bootcase Design version one and you can see that that's now part of the Bootcase 2020 project. First thing I want to show you is how to draw something. Now in Fusion, I think of everything as a piece of wood and it's that simple. And if I look at the bookcase we're actually designing here, you can see I need a base panel, I need a couple of sides, I need a top, I need one, two, three, four dividing partitions, some bottom shelves, some mid shelves, I need some backs for this, etc. So every one of these is a piece of wood and I design just as I would inside a workshop. So before we get into the design, let's just look at some basics. Everything in Fusion starts as a sketch. Just gonna hide this data panel. And up here, underneath the design section, underneath create, you've got this square with a green plus on side it. If you hover over that, it gives you a contextual menu, some help, and it just tells you exactly what you need to do and what that is. So go ahead and click on that, and you can see in the center of the screen, the origin reappears. Now we know that this white circle is 0z, 0y, and 0x in space. And these orange things here are known as planes. They coincide with the view. So if I'm looking down from the top over here on the right-hand side, this little cube, that would give me this plane here. If I'm looking from the front, that's this plane here. If I'm looking from the right, that's this plane here. So what plane do you want to draw on is your first decision. Well, I'm gonna draw a base panel, so I'm going to look down from the top, so I want to go onto this plane here, and click on that. That will take you now into the sketch area. And you can see your tools have changed to correspond with the workspace that you're now working on. Over here in the create, you have a number of choices. You can create a line, a variety of rectangle, circle, arcs, polygons. So pick what makes sense, in our case, a rectangle. Start at the point of origin. Now, most of your designs and drawings will start at the point of origin. It grounds you in space, that zero, zero, zero point we spoke about, and just drag it up. 
And as you sort of drag up this rectangle, you can see it starts to put some dimensions in for you. In this case, 55.858 millimeters high and 96.68 millimeters wide. Give it a dimension, let's make this 40 high. Press tab to come down to the next dimension and let's make it 100 long. And press return, bang. You've now got yourself a rectangle, or in our case, a piece of wood. Now, if you use the free orbit button at the bottom here and just rotate up, you can see there's no depth to that. It's got a length and a width, but there's got no depth. So we need to give this a depth now. So come over here, finish the sketch on this right hand side or on this green tick at the top. And that takes you back to your initial design page. Once again, your tools have changed and now we've got a tool here saying extrude. So extrude on the help menu adds depth to a closed sketch. A closed sketch is when all the sides are black because you give it some other dimensions so it knows where it is in space and its size. Click on the extrude tool and you can see I've now got this arrow and I can simply drag this up with a positive number 80 millimeters, 85 millimeters or negative to give it the size you want. So let's make this 20 millimeters high, bang. And that's it, you've now created your first piece of wood. If you look at this, you can see that these lines don't look parallel, and that's because it's in 3D. And this is giving you a bit of a strange look. Now, I don't like that. If you right click on the cube, you can see you've got some settings. Orthographic, that's currently in it, and that's everything is converging to a point. Perspective gives you a much more clear view to my eyes, and I like that. So I tend to change this to perspective. While we're here, if you come over to the tree at the side, you can see there's a document setting point. Click on the document setting and you can see my units are in millimeters. You click on that, you get a choice. You can have millimeters, centimeters, meters, inches and feet. So if you're working in Imperial, obviously go ahead and change that to inches. I like millimeters, that's what I do. And that's it, it's really that simple. So if you now wanted to put something on top of this, click on sketch again and now click where you want to draw it. So coming off the top of this, I want to do something else. So this now comes back to the sketch plane. You can see my sketch menus back. Let's put a circle on top of this. I know, something like that there, and we'll make that diameter of 15. Return that. Now, although we've given this a diameter of 15 millimeters, you can see it's still blue. It's not constrained. That means it's still free to wander around in space. So we need to tell it where it needs to be. So we need to tell this where it needs to be in space relative to the anchor point, that origin point that we started with. So click on this sketch dimension tool at the top. Create sketch dimensions for sketch geometries. That makes sense. Click on the base. Click on the center of the circle. And now you can see I can give that a position. So let's make that, I don't know, 10 millimeters from that edge. And click it. Now I can still wander around, I'm now constrained to 10 millimeters, so no matter what I do, that will always be 10 millimeters from that edge. So now let's come in and constrain it to this edge as well. And we'll do this one 50 millimeters. Click that. And now you can see my circle's gone black, and I can no longer move this around. That's now fixed, it's constrained. It's constrained 10 millimeters from this edge, 15 millimeters from that edge. I can now come back to my, I can now finish my sketch up here. I can go back to my extrude tool to give it some depth and I can select the circle just made and I can raise it up or I can pull it down. And watch what happens, if I pull it down, it turns red. And look at this menu here. If I'm pulling it up, it defaults to a join. If I'm pushing it down, it defaults to a cut. So I can now go ahead and cut through the block. And I've now just drilled a hole in my piece of wood. So that's just a very, very quick example of how you draw things and how you create things. And it's probably a good idea to go ahead and just play with that and just get used to the feel. Because fundamentally, that's what you're going to use to create your sketches. Now look down here in the bottom left hand corner, can you see this? This is known as your timeline. And what we've done, we created a sketch, we extruded that sketch to make a block of wood, we created another sketch to make the circle, and we pushed that circle down, we extruded it to cut out the hole. And I can go back in time by grabbing this lolly stick and moving it to the left. 
So at that point, I hadn't extruded it. At that point, I hadn't drawn it. At that point, I hadn't extruded the block. And at that point, I hadn't done anything. So you can actually use this to come back in too. So I come in to edit the sketch, right click on it, edit sketch. It takes me back into that area. So I'm gonna come in now and make this 200. Finish the sketch. And then I can come back in time and I've now got a block of wood that's 200 long, but my hole is still 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters as we created. And that's known as parametric modeling. So everything's driven in fusion by parameters and you can change any parameters at any point in your timeline and that will update the entire model for you, which is a hugely powerful aspect of fusion. Now we're going to use those parameters in a little bit more detail. If you come to modify and click on modify, you can actually access your parameters menu. And what I've done here, I've clicked on those three little buttons, those little blobs at the side, and I've clicked pin to toolbar. And you can see that same expression up here. And if you click on change parameters and look at the bookcase design, which is a file that we're working on, you can now see the history inside here. So there's my sketch one. And there's the dimensions I made. It was 200 and it's 40. So if I changed 40, and let's change that now to 80, you can see the diagram. Bang, the diagram has now changed. And so I can actually use these models here and these parameters to quickly modify and play around. Our hole is still 10 from this edge and still 15 from this edge because we constrained it. So that's the, um, the very, very quick walkthrough of how you draw things in Fusion. And very quickly, we've created a piece of wood with a hole in it. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you. If you look on the tree here at the side, you can start to see it's added a few things to it, bodies and sketches. If you look inside the body, you can see we've got body one. If I turn that off using the eyeball, our model changes. Turn it on, the model comes back. Now that's because we've created a body here. This is known as a body. Now, a body is nothing more than a three-dimensional drawing. There's no intelligence inside it, so at this point, we don't know whether it's wood, we don't know the density, we don't know the strength, we can't give it any textures, we can't render it, we will struggle to do joinery on this. It's just a dumb three-dimensional model. Now, we want to add some details to this. We want to add properties, dimensions, material types, so we need to change the body into what's known as a component. Think of this as your raw stock. Think of the component as your finished product. If you right click on bodies and then you create a component from the bodies, the bodies has now vanished and components is in its place. If you now right click on components, you can see you can get an awful lot more things that you can do with a component you can't do from a body. So the body is your raw stock in woodworking terms and you've just roughed it out. Your component is your finished item and we can put finishes on that, we can render it. Um, we can give it a material type, we can look at the strength, the textures, etc. So in woodworking, we're interested in, in components. Yeah. So let's just walk through the timeline and just show you what we actually did. The first thing we did was we created a sketch and we gave that some dimensions. We then extruded that sketch to give it an overall thickness. We then added a new component on that, which was the circle. We use a circle to cut things out, and then we finally changed that body to a component. Now that's pretty much the workflow that you're gonna go through to create every piece of wood. The good news is the shortcuts, and we'll look at those shortcuts now as we get into modeling the bookcase. I'm gonna drag my timeline all the way back. I'm gonna click on the, the sketch, and I'm going to delete all those things. So we've got no history now inside. And if we come back into our parameters, you can see those parameters we added have been cleared because we've deleted them from the history. Now in this history, you've got this user parameter here. And I actually use these user parameters to create the dimensions of the thing we're going to build. So we come back into our bookcase. We know it's got a height of 1252 millimeters. We know it's got a depth of 265 millimeters. And we know it's got a length of 2352 millimeters. And it's good practice to actually set that up inside your parameters. So let's come in here. Let's create a parameter called book case height. We know it's in millimeters and we know the expression for this is just a fixed unit, 1252. 1252 millimeters. And we'll just give it a comment to say, look, that's the height of the bookcase. The comment's not necessary, you don't need that, and click OK. And it's now added a parameter in there. And I can change that parameter if I wish. 
we'll look at that in a bit. We'll now add a second parameter, and let's call this book case width. Again, it's in millimeters. The expression for the book case width is 265 millimeters. And we'll just give it a comment of width. Okay. Now let's add the length of our bookcase. So bookcase length. That's awful spelling. <laughs> That's awful spelling. Bookcase length. And this was 2352 millimeters. And we'll just give a comment of length and click OK. There's one more parameter that I want to define and that's how thick is my stock. We know it's 18 millimeters. So we'll create a final one called stock thickness. It's millimeters again, it's 18 millimeters. Now I've got some parameters set up. I can use those parameters to create my drawing. So the first thing I want to look at is this base panel. So let's model that base panel first. It's no different. We come into the sketch mode in the top left hand corner here. Click on sketch. I'm looking down so I want to put that on basically onto the floor. And I know it's a rectangle so I can just start to drag a rectangle. And you can see that 20.14 millimeters is now highlighted. Well that's going to be the depth of our bookcase. So if I start to write bookcase you can see that it now brings up those parameters we've just made. There's the height, there's the length, and there's the width. So we want this to be the width, perfect. I now press tab, and it highlights a 62.937 millimeters. And I can also come in here and say, this is also a defined thing, and this is bootcase length. And that's now created the rectangle with the right width and the right length. So, click. so either click on the left mouse button now, away from that, and you can see it puts the dimensions in, 265 by 2352. Now, if you actually come back into the parameters here, we could actually change the bookcase length. So if we're talking to a customer, hey, 2352 is too big, I want it to be two meters long, I can just simply change that parameter, and my entire model will now update accordingly. That's parametric modeling. And as we put more complexity into this, if we always reference the dimensions on each of our pieces of timber back to those four parameters, and a few more we'll create as we go through the design here, we can quickly change the entire model just by changing one of those parameters. That is really powerful, and that's why I say it's good practice if you can get into using parametric modeling, i.e. define the dimensions of your furniture and then reference those rather than just creating separate pieces of wood. Okay, we now want to extrude this. Now remember what we did last time, we finished the sketch, we came to the extrusion, we added the thickness, we changed it to a component. We can short circuit all of that. And rather than finishing sketch, just press E on the keyboard. And that's a shortcut to take you directly into your extruding menu. So it's finished the sketch and it's got to set up for that extrusion. Now we know that the thickness of this has got to be the stock thickness. So even in this plane, I can type S and it brings up my menu of the things we've created as parameters and I click stock thickness, bang. Now before you click OK or return, look at this little extrude menu. Right down at the bottom, remember that change when we were making uh, the circle in our little test drawing? By default, it creates a new body. If you click on the down arrow, you can tell it to come ahead and create a new component. Now when you click OK, dunk, that's extruded it and it's changed the body into a component and we have got our first piece of wood. So what I now want to do is to add the two sides onto this. So I can go back into the sketch and I can click on the face now of the base panel because that's where those side panels are going to connect and that brings up this menu again. And I know I want to put one piece of wood here at this end and I know the width of that is going to be the bookcase width. And I know the thickness of that is going to be the stock thickness. I can now come down to the other end. And I know I want that to be the bookcase um, width. And I know that I want the thickness to be the stock thickness. Now do you see this? Now what I've done here is I've constrained this in terms of its width and its thickness and I know it's pinned to this corner because that's where I started. And I can just drag the mouse around the position where I want that end panel. 
So I want it to be on the end of the wood and then click the left button and that's there. Use my short command of extrude. I want to select that one, but I also want to select that one. So now you can see both end panels are now in blue. So I can now come into here, into my distance, click on B and this is going to be the bookcase height. Come down to your extrude menu, you can see that wants to join them together. Now if I were to join these, this would actually join this piece to this piece. Don't get confused, that's not a woodworking joint, that's a modelling joint and that would just mean that these are all a continual piece of material and we know they're not, they're separate. So click on the down button and create new component and then click OK. And now over here we've got some new components, we've got these components here on this side and if you look inside there it's made up of two bodies which are the dumb sketches and they're all contained as a single component so let's call these side panels okay now the final thing I want to do is to put a top on this so I come to my circle I now want to put the top on and the top joins to this face here this top of the wood so I'll click on that it'll take me back to the sketch panel come into the origin to pin it and just start to shape roughly that rectangle and now constrain this again. So we know that the width of this is going to be the bookcase width. We know it's going to be the bookcase length. Okay. If we now rotate this in the finished sketch, you can see there's still no thickness to that and it's now sitting on top of our bookcase, which is where we want it. So I'll give it some thickness, press extrude. Now you need to be careful what you select here. Select that piece we just made, but there's a quirk here. Because this side panel is intersecting it, it assumes you don't want it. Now we do want it, so also click that little piece there. And now I can go ahead and create that to stop thickness. And I want to create it as a component, bang. And it gives me a new component on this side panel here. And we're gonna call that top. Panel. And there you go, you've now modelled very quickly the frame of your bookcase. Now let's have a look at these parameters and show you the power here. If I just shrink that down so you can see what we're going to do and come into the parameters, okay. I now want to change the bookcase height and I'm going to change the bookcase height to 2 metres, 2,000. Watch what happens to the drawing. Bang. Now watch what's happened here, if I measure this from this point here to this point here, you can see that although we've now resized the bookcase panel, it's given us a distance of 2036 millimetres, 36 millimetres too long from our 2 metres. So what's happened here? Well that's added the 18 millimetre thickness of this piece and the 18 millimetre thickness of this piece, 18 plus 18 being 36, and give us that overall length of 2036. That's because we've not allowed for the thickness of the stock. So I want to actually come back in and make a change. So I'm going to come into our history, and I'm going to come back in the history to where I created those side panels. And that's where I extruded those side panels. And I want to come back in and just edit those side panels. So I simply right click on the activity, the extrusion, and edit that feature. And I want to come into this bookcase height that we made here. And at the end of it, I'm going to put minus stock thickness, and that will take off the distance for the top panel, minus stock thickness again for the bottom panel. And you can see that moved down by 18, then 18 again. Now that's changed the overall height of the bookcase. And if I come back in in time, in my time panel, and if I remeasure it, I've now allowed for the thickness of the stock and the overall height of our bookcase is now that two meters. So now I can come back in and confidently change this. Actually, I want this to be 1,000 millimeters high. I want it to be 400 millimeters deep and I want it to be three meters long and I want to use 30 millimeter stock. Boom! That will auto calculate and do that for you. And if you measure your bookcase now, You've now got one that is 1,000 millimetres long, it's 
three meters long and it's got a stock thickness of 30 millimeters and it's got a depth of Four hundred, which is exactly those parameters that we just created inside here. Let's put it back to where it needs to be. We know that the height is um, one two one six. We know that the width of this is two six five, and we know the length of this was two three five two, and we know I'm using eighteen millimeters stock. So it's well worth getting into that parametric modeling by, de by defining this with those various things. Something looks wrong there actually. Length 2352, there you go, the height's wrong. Height is 1216. And that's now resized us and brought us back to where we need to be. So it's well worthwhile defining this. So let's just work through the workflow. First thing I did was I created some parameters for the height, the width, the length, and the thickness of the stock and gave them some names. I then came in, let's let me turn all my sketches on so we can see them. I then came in and I created the first sketch and I created the base panel and I used those parametric dimensions to actually size it. I then extruded it to the thickness of the stock by using those dimensions for stock thickness. I then drew the two side panels and I extruded the two side panels and gave them the dimension of the stock as well. I then drew the top panel and I extruded that using the dimensions. And on these side panels, I allow for the thickness of the stock by using mathematical formulas as I created them. And it's that simple. You've created four pieces of wood. They're all named over here. I can select them and turn them on and off. So I don't want to work with the base panel, turn that off. I don't want to work with the side panel, turn that off, turn the top panel off. And that's pretty much how you use it. So that's all for today. What I want to do on the next lesson is to put these internal panels in and start to show you how to do some woodworking joinery inside Fusion. So I hope you found that useful. So go and open Fusion and have a go, create some components, get that extrusion tool working and play around with parameters. Just add things together at random and see the difference that changing those parameters make. If you can crack parameters in Fusion and do the basics of creating bits of timber that make up our design, you have pretty much got it. So next week I want to have a look at joinery and I want to talk to you about the cut command and how we can use that to make mortise and tenons and dovetails in our joinery. See you then.